What's up guys, Garrett with Self.Dev. It's 7.40 in the morning, about to go to the gym after this pre-workout and do this video. So if you wanna go to my LinkedIn and endorse me for anything, you are more than welcome to. But today we are gonna do LinkedIn's Excel assessment. Probably gonna fail horribly, so not, even with Google, I'm probably gonna do awful. Um, wait, is Excel even on here? Some dude said to do Excel. A, is it Microsoft Excel? There it is, all right. So I'm assuming this is gonna have a lot of formulas and stuff with Microsoft Excel. I'm not very skilled with it above equal sum parenthesis and then the squares I wanna sum and then the other parenthesis. That's about my extent of Microsoft Excel experience even though I still put it on my resume back after I got into high college or whatever. But all right, let's do this shit. All right, oh God, you need to add a line chart showing a sales trend over the last 12 months and you have only a little space to work with. Make a new worksheet, duh. How can you convey the required information within a single cell? Expand the cell. I mean, the thing about Excel is that you can expand the cells whatever width and height you need, so. Trick question. Add a line, Sparkline, a graphic that summarizes data visually within a single worksheet. That sounds like a valid answer. Add an image of the chart to the worksheet. All right, so we only have one square. I'm gonna assume they're not gonna resize the square and that this isn't a trick question, so that's not it. Add an image of a chart to a component. Is that a new worksheet? If that's a new worksheet, I feel like that's the right answer. Add a hyperlink to another worksheet that displays the chart when clicked. Boom, that's, that's what I'd do with my limited knowledge of Excel, so. You are working with columns. Oh, disclaimers, this is for educational purposes only. Um, I'm gonna fail. This is just to give you an idea of what the questions look like. Anyway, back to the test. You are working with columns whose width and font size should not be changed, yet the columns are too narrow to display all the text within each cell. What tool would you use to solve the problem? We can't change the width. Does it say height? It does not say height, so we're gonna wrap the text. Probably should have read all the question answers before I clicked that, but too late now. Of the four chart types listed, which works best for summarizing time-based data? I do think I feel like I need to Google that. What chart works best for time-based data? I feel like it's a bar graph or a line graph. It's a line graph. We're gonna go, actually there's bar graphs on here and a histogram, so F. Line chart is the first answer though. So we're gonna go with line chart. Yeah, that's, that's the correct answer. Line chart, boom. A cell contains a value 7.877 and you wanna have it display as 7.9. We round. Click the decrease the decimal button twice, yes. Uh, actually, let's, let's like test that real quick, right? We got Google Sheets, because that's basically Microsoft Office Online. So I don't know why you want to buy Microsoft Office anymore. I need to blow that part of the video out. F, all right, so we have in 9.876, right? And then we do decrease decimal twice, that didn't work. Oh yeah. Okay, so we decreased the decimal twice. That was the correct answer, I was right, boom. All right, I'm not gonna lie, these are way easier than I thought they were gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like, how would you make a formula to do X, Y, and Z, complex math equation? In the image below, which options can you select so that the appropriate field headers appear in cells A4 through B3 instead of, ter of terms, row, labels, and columns, respectively? So this is one I don't know, and I don't feel like Googling it, so you know the right answer to this question, put it in the comments below. If it's correct, people will give you a thumbs up. We're gonna go with the correct answer. That one, boom. Just kidding, it's probably not the correct answer. Don't copy me. Do your own research, learn this stuff on your own. The auto sum formula in the range C9 through F9 below return unexpected values. Why is this? Are they selecting those? Auto sum formulas refer to the columns to the left of their cells. See, right as I started talking about how this is easy, they start throwing out curveball questions I don't know the answers to. Not really curveball questions, like there's stuff if you worked in Excel, you probably know this. I just haven't used Excel since ever. Um, let's just Google how AutoSum works. 
All right. If you need to sum a column or row of numbers, let Excel do the math for you. Select the cell, click auto sum, press enter. When you, okay, what are the, what are the tricks with this thing though? We have 28 seconds left. Here's an example. I need to go to the gym. All right, then click auto sum, a formula. Notes, the sum of a column immediately below the last number of column. All right, not giving me the correct answer. There's seven seconds left. We're gonna go with this one, because C is always the correct answer when you don't know the correct answer. The text filter in column A is designed to display only those rows where the column A entry has a particular attribute. What is that attribute? Product ID? Oh, is it, oh I could expand that. Whoa, begins with question nine. What does that mean? We're gonna search for question mark. All right, that was not a helpful search term because all sentences end with question marks almost. Question mark, um, no answer there either. All right, uh, I need my friend that works with like Excel right next to me to help me out here. I'm watching this dude, Day in the Life of a Coder. He's pretty good. Go give him a follow if you're into like coding stuff. So we are gonna go with the second character in the cell is nine. What formula is not equivalent to all others? Sum A through A6, sum, oh God, I need, hold on, I gotta look at my spreadsheet, because A3 through A6, right? So that wasn't too difficult, A4, F6, okay, yeah, so those are the same, um, A3, A4, A5, A6, that's the same, that's not the same. What does that do? We are experimenting right now. So we've got 9.9 .9 on those three, and then right here we're gonna do equals sum a3, a6. So it just adds just those two, okay. So that's the correct answer, boom. To ensure shapes, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna get done with this by eight. The gym opens at eight, and if I'm not there at eight, I don't get a machine to do shoulder press on, and it's shoulder day, oh my gosh. Or like a squat rack to do shoulder rest press on. I'm one of those dicks that just takes the squat rack and I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna do squats here, I'm gonna do other stuff, and yeah. To ensure shapes and other objects are equal left and right distance apart, select the shapes, page layout, align, then click and distribute align middle. Yeah, right? Is that one of the things? Page layout, align. Where did Excel go? Did I close Excel? Um, this is different from Excel, so. We're not gonna get the right answer there. We're just gonna go with closing those tabs and then align middle, because page layout align. Oh, is it align middle or align center? I'm pretty sure it's align middle. I'm gonna just go with that. All right, an organization chart, which shows the which shows the hierarchy within a company or organization is available as blank that is included with Excel. It's smart art, okay, cool. I'm not gonna finish this video. The one I just closed out in YouTube. Um, you want to be able to restrict values allowed in a cell and need to create a drop down list of values from which users can choose. Which feature should you use? Hold on, my brain turned off while I was reading that out loud. You want to be able to restrict values allowed in certain cells. Okay, I think I did this at work once. How did I do it? Pro protect worksheet? No, I don't think that's it. That would like, I feel like that would password protect your worksheet. That doesn't sound right. Conditional formatting? I don't, I don't feel like that's it either. Allow users to edit ranges? No. Data validation? That's it. I'm gonna go with data, data validation. Which format will display the value 27500000 as 27.5? That is a good one. That is a that is a thinker right there, you know? Um, hold on, let me pull up Google Sheets again. So this pre-workout's got a vasodilator in it, so I think it's expanding the blood vessels all over my body. Now there's less blood in my brain, so I can't think as clearly. I wonder if that's how this works. This video is gonna be edited horribly, so. 
What am I checking it for again? All right, so we've got the value. We got 30 seconds, right? So 275000000. And then we want it formatted <clears throat> as that. So does it mean like change the values in this cell? Is that doesn't what? I don't understand this question. <gasps> Whoa, it just erased one of my zeros. Oh, great. Well, we're gonna go with C, because three seconds. So, there's that. All right, to round up a value to the nearest increment of your choice, such as next five cents, what function should you use? Oh my gosh, everything is colliding. Like. In JavaScript or in Python, there's like a ceiling thing. In some coding language, there's ceiling. And then there's max and, ah, ah, dang it. Oh, oh, dude, I should live stream these and then get people to vote on the correct answer. That'd be fun. That'd make this like a game show. All right, we're gonna go with roundup because that sounds like the right answer to me. So what function returns a reference to a cell that is specialized, that is a specific, specified distance from a base cell. Offset, maybe? <clears throat> what is the best way to achieve the XL, to activate the XL help system? F1. Boom. What's up, we passed. We haven't used X, all right, so. I guess we used Excel a little bit in like high school and stuff, but yeah, 70th percentile. Now, like I need to know, does that change? Is it like a floating number that you have to pass? Because if 100 people take it and 90 of those people do super shitty, and then I do, if they only get like four questions right, and then I get five questions right, I'm in like the 100th percentile, right? But then if 100 more people take it and they all get six questions right, then am I not in the 100th percentile anymore? Or is it a solid number? Like you have to get at least 14 out of 15 of these questions right. Like I, I really wanna know this. So if anybody from LinkedIn ever sees this video, one, don't ban me from LinkedIn because I'm pretty sure, I don't, I don't think I'm supposed to be making these videos to show off the assessments. I haven't read the terms of service. Who actually reads those? I've probably given my firstborn child away like four times. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go work out now. So if this helps you out, give me a thumbs up. My face is super tingly from the beta alanine in my pre-workout. Um, come join the Discord if you wanna hang out and talk tech. Uh, I do monthly projects for front-end developers. I also review front-end developer resumes. I will try to help you out if you're not a front-end developer and you send me a resume. Can't promise it'll be too beneficial for you though. Because like front-end development's what I specialize in right now. Trying to make the transition to full stack. So there's that and I think that's it. So come endorse me on LinkedIn. We can connect and be at BFFs and I will see you next time. Peace. One.